welcome to DC Today. It is Thursday, August 24th, and it's good to be with you all here today. Uh, kind of a wide range today in, in markets. Um, we had uh, futures were actually up pretty nicely, especially on the NASDAQ. We were up about one and a half percent before the market opened, and it was largely to do with, with one of the largest chip uh, makers out of the uh, AI uh, realm. And, and so earnings were across the board just far better than expectations. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, so markets were up, tech stocks were up. Um, there was sort of some uh, momentum and some exuberance going into technology as we hit the open. And so markets were off to the races. We were up about 220 points on the, on the Dow uh, early morning. NASDAQ was up and we just gave that back throughout the rest of the day. I wrote it in there, but you know, some of these sort of what we've talked about as shiny objects where there's uh, really exciting things out there like artificial intelligence and, and how it will you know, change the world potentially. And, and people, people usually buy into stocks really far ahead of any of that ever coming to fruition from an earnings standpoint. This particular company is actually starting to, to see those earnings come through, which is a good thing. But the stock is just priced so far to perfection at this point. There's not a whole lot that's going to you know, support that type of valuation. And, and so valuations just matter. And it was kind of a classic buy the rumor, sell the news on that particular company, which was up 10 percent to open and end up closing literally flat on the day. And then the overall market sold off as well. Like I said, we're up 220. We ended up closing down 373 on the Dow. NASDAQ was up a percent in the morning, closed down on the day about 1.8% on the day. And then yields were up across the board. Uh, two year was over 5% again. Um, but I think some of that could have been there, there's uh, the Fed symposium meeting in Jackson Hole started today. There was uh, some comments from President Harker out uh, that really weren't good or bad, they were pretty much in line. He, he basically just said that um, he feels that rates have been taken to a point that are restrictive enough to kind of let it work through the economy and see how things shake out, see how far credit contracts so far. And he cited it a little bit, you know, that credit has pulled back a bit, but not very much. We're, we're talking about pretty, pretty small potatoes as far as an actual uh, credit drawdown all things considered equal, but he was sort of poor just, just right on interest rates and that he wasn't going to commit to saying when rates would be decreased again in the future. But it just felt to me like markets were pricing in what Powell's comments may or may not be tomorrow. And they were pricing in a more hawkish tone. And whether there's validity to that or not, I mean, I, if, you know, if markets were trying to get ahead of it by a day and, and that's why things sold off and rates moved up, uh, if I were a betting man and I'm not, other than fantasy football sometimes, um, I, I would take the opposite for the day tomorrow um, as he does come out with his comments um, in a speech, meaning that, that I think they'll, they'll be more benign than what may have been feared. But we'll have to see. Um, the, uh, some of the economic news out on the day, uh, jobless claims, again, were a little better than expected. Uh, fewer people, people filing, uh, less people filing for unemployment. So we had jobless claims come in at negative two or at uh, 230,000 versus a uh, 240 estimate. So still very strong labor market. Those are good things, not bad things. Uh, we had durable goods today disappoint a little bit. It was down 5.2% for July. A negative 4% was expected. Pretty much all of that was from one sector, which was transportation. Without that, uh, we were still positive. In fact, a little bit better than expected. So I didn't read too, too far into that. Um, and uh, we did see mortgage rates today move um, a bit higher, at least on the week. We were at 709 last week. We're at 723 now. So this is the highest mortgage rates we've seen uh, since 2001. So, you know, the, the, the housing numbers haven't reflected this a whole lot yet. But as time goes on, it's inevitable. The difference now is that there's just a, a much greater amount of equity uh, in, in homes. And so... Um, the other thing is that the amount of expenditure on uh, consumers, on households for overall just debt expense, historically, even with rates being higher, uh, is, not, is not really that high. It's actually below historical norms. Now, over time, I think that'll work through as loans run off. People have to refinance. Businesses have to refinance. You know, loans come due. And so those rates get realized. But with more equity, with more cash out there, and technically with just more savings, some of these higher rates haven't worked their way through the economy as, as much as other, otherwise would have been realized in some other cycles. But all, all to say, we've had a pretty down August in markets, and that, that continued on the day. We've got um, comments out tomorrow that I think will be market moving. There's not a lot of uh, economic calendar tomorrow. There's some consumer sentiment 
that you'll see. Um, and uh, we'll have Dividend Cafe in your inbox for tomorrow. I'll be with you next week, actually, the long form DC today on Monday and then through the remainder of the week uh, as David is on vacation. I, I'm going to step in and, and uh, have some good goodies for you throughout the week. But with that, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you reading as always. Reach out with questions um, and I shall talk to you soon. Thank you.